Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So a while ago I got these headphones, Bluetooth headphones, and they sound awful. And not just because it's a Bluetooth, they generally do sound bad. If I could sum up the sound quality of these headphones, I would sum it up in one word, which is hollow. They sound hollow. And I think it's because they're closed back. If I drew a frequency response graph of how these headphones sound, it would pretty much be like this. We got a nice slope up from the really low frequencies. We got a nice roll off at the high ends. But right around here, around 750 kilohertz, boom! I've taken the sticker off the right, and, um, the right side and the left side, thinking there might be some nice holes under there which would let the air through, but no, it's completely sealed. And I've had a look inside these headphones. The sound drivers themselves look good. Sound quality is not. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a whole bunch of holes in there to let the air flow in and out, and hopefully that should balance the sound. Alright, so I've got some music queued up. And unlike a certain other YouTuber, I don't have freakish ears on a stand, so this will have to do. So we can do a comparison of how these headphones sound as they are right now. So here's something from the Star Kids. Okay, that's enough of that. All right, hello. Is this thing working? Okay, yeah, it is working. So right now I might look like an idiot who's talking to a pair of headphones, and well, that's because I am an idiot who's talking to a pair of headphones. Yeah, audio quality of the microphone on these is not great. So here we are inside the headphones, our head pahonies. That's a decent sized driver. You may notice that I've stuffed a lot of tissue paper in there to soak up all that heinous, <laughs> but that didn't really work. So, yeah, the holes it is. Well, I was going to drill a whole bunch of holes in there, but I'd have to make holes in this, and holes in this, and holes in this. How could something so over-engineered sound so bad? Honest to God, it sounded better on the microphone than it does in real life. The sky is looking ominous. This is my kind of sky. Someone out there doing stuff, they might think I'm filming them, but I don't care. This is my kind of sky. Just look at that, it looks nice and stormy. Now this is more like it. This is the weather I like. The only thing that would make this better if it was a storm. You will only be a part of my reign. So that idea is pretty much out the window. So I've been sitting with the equalizer for about two hours and I just cannot make those headphones sound good. So I'm going to reinstate my old headphones which had a much better sound and I'm going to make this circuit here which I've just come up with headphone amplifier. It's a pretty simple circuit. Now this doesn't amplify voltage, and it's going to be biased at the midpoint by these two resistors here, which are going to be the same. I'm probably going to use 100k for those resistors. And this one here is going to be like uh, 470 ohms, I guess. Might go up from there, might go down from there, all depends. The only problem is I don't know if the gain of the transistor is going to be enough. So if it isn't, instead of a single transistor here, I'm going to use a Darlington, where one transistor amplifies the other. Alright, so I suppose I better find an ideal resistance for that emitter resistor. So the voltage going across that resistor is going to be 6 volts, which squared is 36. 
I don't even need to do this thing. I will just divide that by the resistance. 470 ohms. And yeah, I think it will handle that. Let's see what we'd get if we had 100 ohms. So, 36 divided by 100 ohms. Oh yeah, that's a... That's going to be too much for that resistor. What about 220 ohms? So again, 36, which is 6 squared, divided by 220 ohms. What do we get? That's way more in the ballpark. But you know, I'm going to stick with 470 for now. And if it's not loud enough, I'll drop the resistance. But I think 470 is a pretty good starting point. So that's what I'm going to do. And I better stop this recording. Well, here it is built up on the breadboard. Ignore all this stuff here, that's nothing to do with it. So, as you can see, we've got two circuits here. Now, this isn't for stereo. They're both the same circuit, except this one has one transistor, and this one has two. So this is the single transistor arrangement, and this is with the Darlington. Just in case a single transistor doesn't have enough gain. You may also notice that I've put a couple of variable resistors here, or potentiometers, because I want to see half of the supply voltage across that resistor, and with these two potentiometers, I can dial that in. They're basically taking place of these two resistors here, so, um, yeah. Okay, so the first test of this circuit is, and look at this, new meter. Not using the faulty meter anymore. What voltage am I going to get across that 470 ohm resistor? Now, in an ideal world, with this set at its halfway point, we should have 6 volts, because I'm going to supply this with 12 volts. But this isn't an ideal world. Got to factor in the voltage drop across the transistor and whether it has enough gain or not. So, um, let's just see what we get. And we have about 3.8 volts. So, yeah, we don't quite have enough gain with that transistor. Now, I'm going to see if I can adjust this and make the voltage different. That is, if I can use the screwdriver to... Of course! I never had the right tools at my disposal when I need them. Alright, can we adjust it with this screwdriver? Yeah, we can. Okay, we're going the wrong way. Can we get 6 volts across the transistor? Yeah, but that's um, a little bit of a stretch. Okay, now we're going to try it with the Darlington circuit. I expect this is going to be around 5 volts because, you know, we've got the voltage drop across two transistors. Not one transistor, but two. So, let's see what we've got with this, but we should have much more gain. And yes, we do actually, it's a little bit higher than I thought it would be. But you know what? That's more or less perfect. Now the question is, can this be used as a headphone amplifier that takes a line input and spits out a much higher current output to a headphone? Okay, so I've now got it connected to my Juicego headphones through its auxiliary in. When I've got it plugged in like this, that's overriding the Bluetooth and stuff and just connecting it directly to the headphone drivers. And I can hear the switching noise of the power supply that I'm using quite clearly through these headphones. Now I'm going to touch the base of this transistor and I should hear a buzz. Oh yeah, quite loudly actually. I'll put that up to the camera's microphone, maybe you can hear it? So I know that's working. So why do I use wall warts to test my electrical experiments? Well, it's convenient. And that dumb cat is walking around in the rain. Isn't me, or are cats incredibly stupid creatures? I've got some audio queued up on my computer. I've got the output of the computer going into this little circuit here, and the output of this circuit going to these headphones, plugged in via the aux in. So, excuse the mess in this room. Now, I'm going to try and hold the camera, I mean, the headphones up to the camera's microphone. Um, can we just snap that on there? Yeah. So, I've got the headphones sitting on the camera's microphone now. Got this old Unix app which plays MIDI files. Well, uh, might need to turn it up just a little bit. I think that sounds pretty good if you ignore the power supply ripple noise and the fact that this really hates the Windows sound font. This is what it's supposed to sound like. The instruments are playing themselves. We've got ghosts in the machine. Would you believe that this is Linux? 
This looks like Winamp, but it ain't Winamp. It's QMMP with the classic Winamp skin. And I cannot get it to play midis. But that's no problem because you saw two other midi players earlier. So I'm now trying this circuit. So this circuit doesn't have as much volume as the Darlington circuit did. And it's probably loading down the audio output quite a bit. So, um, yeah. Gonna go with this. The only thing I am gonna have to take into consideration is this is going to need a very stable power supply, which I can make. So what you're looking at right here is a USB audio device, because this is the only thing I've got that will give me good sound on Linux, almost specifically on Wine. So I'll be doing something in Open Modplug Tracker, which is one of the main reasons I have Wine, and it'll be going all right for a while, but at random intervals, I'll get this noise. It's really irritating. I get that on the HDMI. I get that on the computer's line out. But I don't get it on this thing. And although it does have a headphone out, well, it's marked as a headphone out, it's actually a line out. And if I plug headphones into that, it loads it down too much, and the sound quality is awful. In other words, it gets all weak and tinny. And although, yes, I do have a headphones output on this amplifier, it's really bassy, which is not good when you're trying to make music. You know, you want to get a good, nice and flat frequency response. So anyway, the results are in, and I'm going to go with the 470 ohm resistor, because that was plenty loud enough. So, I think it's time to take all this off the breadboard, put it onto a more permanent fixture, and then I'll have a nice headphone amp. Right, well, the build has started. I don't know a better way to phrase that. So, from the top going down, this is the voltage regulator, which will make the voltage coming in nice and smooth. So, input capacitor, L7812 regulator, output capacitor, and then there's one channel of the headphone amplifier, one channel of the headphone amplifier built. Input capacitor, output capacitor, two transistors, if you can see that, and the bias adjust resistor. Okay, I'll level with you. I'm low on 100k resistors, and this is just a good substitute. I don't think that's making contact with the actual wire. There we go. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to power it up now. And if there's any high current, it'll blow this bulb rather than the circuit. And why am I talking like this? Okay, let's explode. Oh, no explosion. That's a, that's a first. Right, so we got 15.8 volts, almost 16 volts going in. Almost 16 volts going in. I so retarded, I think I sound. Let's see what's coming out of the regulator. Okay, a nice, good regulated 11.9 volts. I don't know how well that's showing on the camera. And out of the amplifier, do we have a few volts? Oh yeah, we got about 4.8 volts. Well, that's in the ballpark. I don't think we could get much more perfect than that. I don't believe this. I built a circuit and it's working perfect first time. Well, it's looking a lot more populated now. So yes, I've added the second channel and even added a volume control potentiometer. And yes, I will show a schematic of this at the end. But right now I've got to go and do some testing on this thing. Like I was saying. Make sure the voltages are how they should be, and everything else. I despair of people sometimes. Sometimes I wish that the entire population of this planet would just die. If I was the only person left on this planet, it would be heaven. There would be no teenagers to make my life a misery. And by teenagers, I mean grown adults that still act like teenagers, listening to their teenage music, smoking their weed, and making life difficult for good, honest people like me. Yes, yeah, sometimes I think like that. And I'm not someone who lies. There was some douchebag outside earlier with a chainsaw. He seems to have gone now, but it'll probably start up again before too long. And not only that, there were some noisy Russians outside. I call Eastern Europeans Russians because they all sound like it, so they might just as well be. Going hubba dubba wubba dubba rubba dubba and moochie 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 Playing their crappy music out of their car at full volume. They seem to be the only ones that can afford expensive cars. Whereas us, 
actual British citizens. The government treats us like second-class or even third-class citizens. Now, am I the only person who sees a problem with that? They're probably all over here illegally anyway. Am I the only asshole with any class left on this gosh-forsaken planet? I swear to crap gone high. Even the weather's against me. It was nice and grey and rainy earlier. Even heard a rumble of thunder or two. Then the sun comes out and... I'm only happy when it's raining. Because rain is my kind of weather. Grey skies, the feeling of impending doom, and everything else. So what do I get? Boring old sun. So I never get a chance to be happy. Now, isn't that sad? Now you know. Even as a kid, I didn't really like sunny days that much. For someone like me, who's an introvert, mainly an indoors person, sunny days are the worst. It's kind of ironic, don't you think? I love rainy weather and grey days, and happen to live in the sunniest part of the UK. And you think your sunny weather is oh so good, so wonderful. Well, there is nothing wonderful about And every time the sun comes out. Well, I've finished building the circuit, I've given it a little listen, and I must say it sounds pretty good. It's nice and clear, there's no distortion, good wide frequency response, and it's plenty loud. I mean, that will easily drive a pair of 32 ohm headphones. Oh, guess my favorite time of the day, night time. Anyway, I'm just gonna stuff the headphones on the camera's microphone. These are my good headphones, by the way, not those um, Beats Audio things or whatever they were. Juice, audio, whatever. Yeah, there's no way on camera that's going to come out how good that actually sounds. And as promised, here is a schematic. I thought it would be easier if I break it into sections. So, we've got the voltage regulator here, with a 7812 voltage regulator. Of course, you could add a transformer and a rectifier. Transformer of about 13 volts would do. Maybe even 12 volts. I just have mine connected up to a 15 volt supply, so... That's why I haven't put this bit in. And of course, there's the main circuit. For this transistor, I used a C... Um, C945, because that's the first transistor I came to. You can pretty much use any NBN transistor there. Then two N's, two N1711. I just used those because I thought they looked cool. And yeah, the only difference in this schematic to the thing that I made is that instead of two 100k resistors, I used a 200k potentiometer, mainly because I'm low on 100k resistors, so... And then there's the volume control and the rest of the circuit. And of course, there's two of those for stereo. Anyway, gonna wire this into my audio system now, and until next time, goodbye.